Hello YouTube, I'm Dr. Tactical and the doctor will see you now. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of today's video, I want to talk a little bit about Walther and just what a forward thinking, pioneering type of a gun company they are. They think of problems that we don't even know about, didn't even realize. For example, here I've got the uh, box in, in here is my Walther um, Q4 steel frame. Love this gun. It's a heavy gun. Um, and it you know, comes in this, whoa, <sighs> sorry, this slippery box. Um, anyway, really nice. And now they've come out with their new PDP, which has all kinds of front serrations, rear serrations. You can't slip with this thing. This is a really nice, grippy box. Kudos, uh, Walther. I really appreciate you thinking of me. Okay, now let's take a look in the boxes and let's get into it. So, let's go through similarities first. Over here, we've got the PDP. This is the compact version. You know that because it says compact here. The full size says full size here. This is the Q4 SF. SF stands for steel frame. So, similarities. Um, they both have a similar texture on the grip, and they have these, I'll call them finger swells. They're not finger grooves. I don't know exactly what they are, but they are very comfortable. Um, it's very similar on both. There are some differences, and we'll talk about that. Um, let's see, what else? They uh, come with the same 15-round magazines. The magazines are interchangeable between these two guns. Um, you can also purchase uh, 17 round mags. I have not uh, actually loaded this yet. I have a feeling somebody told me it actually is an 18 rounder, but it said 17 on the uh, packaging, so I'll play with it. Anyway, they both come optic. These are both optics ready. Um, the internals are very similar, and really, I'm going to say that's where a lot of the similarities end. Um, these are these are very different guns. They carry differently, they function differently, they shoot differently. Uh, oh, one other one other thing I want to say though on the, on the similarities, they are both really really nicely built guns. When you look at these long um, uh, slide stop or um, releases, they're um, ambidextrous, so you got them bilaterally placed. And they are, actually, they are rock solid. They're, I mean, this is a really solid design. And it's what you expect from a quality manufacturer. Um, I mean, these things are just rock solid. And I say that because while you expect it, it's a common story. This is a uh, HK P30SK, also ambidextrous. And as it's notorious for, on the left side, this thing just wiggles like crazy. Um, and there's, I mean, even people sometimes will put wedge stuff in there or put the tape around it or something just because it becomes so annoying. And if you carry it, if this area is free at all, it you'll, you'll know. Anyway, that's not a problem you have with Walther. These, these guns are really top notch and made nicely. Um, so let's get to some differences. First of all, I, I mentioned the grips were very similar. Now, the uh, PDP comes with replaceable back straps, different sizes. This is the medium one that's in here. It comes with a large and a small. The Q4SF does not come with um, different uh, grips, but you can purchase them. I think Lock is a company, L-O-K, I don't think, I know, which makes really nice grips for this. And this whole unit comes off. The, all three sides of this come off and gets replaced. Uh, I, you know, I, I saw, I know the humble marksman who shoots a heck of a lot more than I do, uh, really didn't care for this grip. So, far, But he, again, he shoots a lot more than I do. So far, I haven't had any issues with it. I know he talked about just the concerns of when it gets damp and that type of thing. And I haven't, haven't experienced it. But uh, if I do, I'll be changing. But so far, I've been pretty happy with this. Um, they both come with um, you know, optics ready, as I said before, when, uh, before under the similarities. However, 
when you take this optics plate off of the PDP, it looks like you get to keep your uh, rear sight. Um, I don't, and it looks like it sits, sits deep enough. And I'm saying this, I haven't done this yet, but it looks like it sits deep enough. I, I should point out this gun is on loan to me by the uh, Gun Tree Club of Maryland. Um, and so I'm not making any major alterations to it. I'm just sort of showing you what I, you know, what they sent me. Um, but it looks like the pl optic plate will sit down low. So the optic itself will sit low and you probably can co-witness with that, but I don't know that for sure. Um, so the Q4SF has a removable optics plate. And unfortunately, this really nice adjustable steel uh, site back here. The others are, are plastic sites, and I think that they I, they should be uh, interchangeable with Glock sites. So really, there's a variety of things you can change if you don't care for the polymer three-dot system. This is a blackout system, um, which I happen to really like, and I also really like the fact that you can alter this, although I have to say it came pretty nicely zeroed uh, from the box. Now, granted, it was a slippery box, but it came pretty well zeroed. So, it, you get, with both of these, you can call in to um, to Walther, or not call in. For this one, there's like a QR code in the, in the box. This one, you got to go online. I had to go online and find them and tell them, hey, I bought this gun. Here's the serial number. I need an optics plate. And you get to pick one. You get one for free. And I'm going to be putting on, which I will be doing a video of shortly, uh, this Holosun, um, which is the 507C. It's the green version, X2, with this ACSS reticle. I have that. I have the ACSS reticle, or the Vulcan reticle, I guess it's called, on several of my guns. And I have to say, I love it, and I'm definitely going to do a video talking about that. Anyway... So they sent me this optics plate for the steel. The problem is this optics plate does not have uh, sights on it. So you're going to lose your sights. You're going to lose your rear sights so you have no backup. Um, but that's but they give it to you when you ask. I purchased the CNH um, setup, which will fit it. And actually looks like it's going to sit much lower as well, which I kind of like. The lower it sits, the, happy, the thinner this plate is, as long as it maintains its strength, the happier I am. So I'm going to gonna go with this because to me, even though this gun is pretty damn heavy, I'm, gonna, I'm planning on carrying it occasionally. And I, if I'm going to carry a gun, I want to have backup. Or even if I'm, if, even if I'm competing with it, I want to have backup. Okay, but it looks to me like the PDP, you get to keep it. It's just the plate that you, you know, when you get the plate, you'll still have your rear sights. Although, sort of not as nice rear sights. Okay, the, the two really big differences, I think, with these guns. One is the girth of the slide. When you look at these, let me get that out of there. When you look at these like this, you can see from a carrying standpoint how the taper in this really b tends to blend more than the the block in this thing um so just something to know that if you know you're going to have let me get off of this these guns are essentially the same size as far as length as far as height but when it comes to the slide portion the new PDP, in order to get these wonderful serrations, I mean, these things are almost as nice as the one on the box. They're really nice. And you really, I mean, you can't miss with these things. Um, you can really, you can you know, press check all day long. However, the price you're going to pay for that is maybe a little bit more printing or a little more discomfort. Now, I'm saying discomfort. I don't like to say discomfort without actually trying something. And I haven't carried this. But it just it seems to me that the thicker, in, in my experience, the thicker the slide is, the more difficult it is to carry in a comfortable manner. Okay. So that's one big difference is that, that thickness. The other really big thickness, which let's just get right to, is the weight. 
So, now both of these guns are unloaded, nothing in the chamber, no mags. This is the um, steel frame that I'm gonna, I'm sorry, no, this is the uh, PDP that we're gonna check first. And it is weighing in at one pound, 5.2 ounces. So that's with no, no ammo. However, since these take the same magazines and the same nine millimeter, assuming you have the same load in both, um, that shouldn't, th this is apples to apples when it comes to weight here. Okay. And now the steel frame, 2.51 uh, ounces. I'm sorry, two, two pounds, 5.1 ounces. That's a, that's a significant weight difference. Now, I will say this I have been carrying quite a bit, and it's not as bad as you would think. It, it, as long as you're carrying it in a decent holster, in a decent position, I've, I've gotten some time literally under my belt with it, and, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this. Now, one thing that I'm going to sort of finish on is I just want to talk about triggers on these. And again, I, on the steel frame, I we didn't check that. It's empty. No mag. Um, turn that off. So the steel frame, I was disappointed out of the box when I first felt the trigger. Uh, I've had the opportunity to play with several friends, uh, Walthers, and feel this you know, famous trigger. And I was very excited about it. And there was a lot of play when I got back to this area. Now, this gun now has probably probably about 250 rounds through it. So that actually has made a difference. So it is sort of very, you know, coming back, comes back smoothly. There's a little play at the wall and then bang. And it really doesn't creep and jerk a little bit like it did at the very beginning. And I think I had shown that on a previous video. But I do want to point out that that's something that's worked, that has worked itself out. I'm also not a lefty, but it's easier while I'm doing this camera to do it this way. Um, now, this has not been fired, uh, to, to my knowledge, ever, unless they did it in the factory for a test, but there's no target or anything in there. This, right out of the box, that is effortless just to go right to that wall. And you know what? Even now, I have to say... That was a, that, that, this may be a slightly better trigger on the PDP. Back. Okay, the reset's nice. I didn't check the reset here. Let me go right-handed. Now, go left hand so you can see. Okay. The reset's really nice on this too. But the initial pull, um, I would have to give the advantage, I would say, to the, um, PDP, but it's really subtle. And like I said, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, um, the more I use this, the more this is breaking in. So I, I'm not really complaining about it. It's already improved tremendously just after 250 rounds. Okay. So we've had a chance to look at the similarities, the differences, some pros, some cons. At the end of the day, these are two really high quality guns. Uh, the steel frame I've been carrying quite a bit, and uh, I, I have to say, it carries it carries nicely. And when you're carrying a gun like this, there's just something about it. it it's yes, there's plenty of guns that can do the same thing, but you just feel like like you're like you're wearing a Rolex. There's just something nice about this. Um, I've never carried the PDP, but I'm sure it carries nicely. I've shot the PDP the in the full size, not this compact. Uh, the compact, by the way, is on loan to me by uh, our friend Neil at uh, Gun Tree Club. Thank you, Neil. Um, he's going to hate that I just said um, though. He counts them when he watches these things. Anyway, the uh, steel frame and the PDP are both winners. So I really would like you guys to, to like and subscribe because that's going to really help the channel. It's going to help me. I, I, I absolutely love doing this. I've really been enjoying it. And the more uh, feedback I get, the better. Those of you that have experience with these guns, please contribute. Let's talk about it. Uh, I will tell you when Neil lent me this, I think in the back of his mind, he knew damn well that I was going to end up buying it, which is probably going to happen. If for no other reason, of all the guns in my collection, 
and there are many, I've always had the same problem, um, you know, with the box slipping. But now having the opportunity to get a box that has front and rear serrations, um, that's incredibly grippy, and this is a game changer. This is a game changer. So those of you that share with my my problems with that, get yourself a Walther PDP and that box will not slip again. I'm Dr. Tactical. Thank you for watching. Dr. Tactical, out.